Good day and welcome to the Tech Central Podcast. My name is Daniel Robus. I'm your host. And today I'm joined by Nick Lassinger, CTO of Euphoria. Well, thank you very much, Daniel. It's lovely to be here. Euphoria Telecoms is a South African cloud-based cost-effective business telephony system and service that offers great control and automated operational efficiency. They're servicing over 4,000 customers in South Africa and continue to grow rapidly. And we're going to dive into a little bit more about Euphoria and answer the question, a telephone is a telephone is a telephone or is it? The line item on your expense list of telephony becomes this almost grudge purchase. It's something that gets ignored. It's mm. something that just, oh, you know what, we have people have to be able to phone us. And, you mm. know, uh, we, we've got a phone and it rings and I'll answer it. And, well, that's, you know, I get a, and I get a mm. bill at the end of the month and I pay it and I, and I move on. Mm. And it's, it's a line that we ignore. And it's a line that we think that we can do nothing about. And, you know, often engaging in conversations with small business owners and say, well, what is your system doing for you? Mm. How is it improving your business? And they kind of get this very confused look on your face. I mean, what, what do you mean? It's a telephone. It makes and receives phone calls. Mm. And I was chatting to a friend the other day, and I said, well, you know, the very same sort of thinking was prevalent in the cellular space not too long ago. Yeah. You had a device. It made and received phone calls. And if you were lucky, you could play Snake. Uh, and if you were really bored, you, you could see if you could drive a truck over it. But other than that... You know, what did you do with it? Not, not much. And, and somebody kind of came up with the idea of, well, hang on a second, what if it did more? And that's exactly the space that we've been pushing for the last 11 years now. It says, what if it did more for you? Okay. What if it added more to your business? Isn't it all about just taking and making phone calls? How does life change by working with Euphoria for your customers? Taking a telephony system out of the physical premises and putting it in the cloud is firstly, uh, it's been a very interesting journey because, you know, people have literally looked up at the sky when we've talked to them about it initially. And, and it was a, a great evolution in sort of the, the 2010, 2011, 2012 era of people going, w you want to do what with my phones? Is, is that, but I need a phone on my desk. No, you, know, you still have a phone on your desk. It, it will look the same and it'll act the same for you. But the system itself won't be on the wall in that back room. It will be somewhere else in the cloud, in a data center hosted environment. And getting over that mindset, going, well, okay, but why would I want to do that? You know, I feel comfortable with that box that I can see. It, it's, a, it's a thing that I know what I'm paying for. I can physically go and touch it. And so coming from that sort of mindset and, and talking to people, like, why would you want it in the cloud? That was our first kind of port of call for where, where are we adding value? And say, well, if it's sitting in the cloud, it also doesn't matter where you're sitting which okay. is a very funny place for us to be right now because it seems to have come very much full circle. Here we are back in 2020, 2021, and we're going to people going, guys, you also don't have to be in your office. And particularly now when we don't want to be in the office and going, everyone go home, having a cloud-based telephony system is quite powerful. It also means that you can leverage your operational costs. So things okay. like having a single system across multiple branches, if you're that fortunate, or being able to spin up a new branch, but you don't necessarily need to hire things like a receptionist for your new branch in Potchefstroom because that call can get answered in Joburg and pass through to people in Potchefstroom, your operational people on the ground there, if you want, so want to do. You know, taking it further and saying, well, what about having your inter-extension calls across your branches between your people that they can phone each other as an inter-extension call, it's free, which is great particularly if they're sitting in different branches. But what if it was a step further than that? What if you took mm -hmm. that into a, I'm going to put your extension onto the mobile device that sits in your pocket, mm -hmm. and you're still phoning from the office, you're still phoning from your extension, you're still phoning your colleague free of charge, you're still wow. phoning your customer coming from your office number, still wow. as an official call. Your office is paying the bill. I don't know if you've ever had the, the absolute joyous event of having to submit cell phone claims to the company of going, I made that call and I made that call and I made that call. Why are we doing that? Why on earth would we want to do that when I can just phone from my extension? It's coming from the office PBX. It's phone from the office telephone system. I don't have to claim it. It's on their bill. 
and wow. it's official call. They can see who I've phoned. They know the costs of what I've spent. And if the guy wants to phone me back, he can phone me instead of phoning me on my cell phone number. Now that the entire world knows my cell phone number, they can phone me on my direct office line. And that's where we started. And that was the whole idea of going, okay, let's make it a single system across the board. So you can oh. get your cost savings. You can get okay. your, all, all the things that you do that comes with that. And you go, okay, well, then how do we, how do we go from there? How do we add more value off? Yeah. How do we make this more powerful? Well, okay, let's take away the hardware out of this. Okay, well, yeah. now the hardware is irrelevant. But it's also about the control of the system. Because okay. your traditional telephony systems kind of very much boxed you into a, well, now you're an eight user system. Yeah. And if you reached your eight users and now you've yeah. got a ninth user, now you're like, well, now you have to have a 16 user system, but I don't have 16 people, I've got nine. And then that person unfortunately possibly fell off the bus and then and went somebody else. So now you're back to down to eight people, but you've got a 16 user system. Now you're like, but I didn't even now need mm. a 16 user system. Mm. So that scale up, scale down, because very few businesses don't work in seasonal ebbs and flows. Mm. 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 But yeah. do you understand that environment? Do you understand how that traffic looks? Do you understand what your needs are? In it? I mean, there are very particular businesses that experience this to the extreme. And if you look at places that supply things like flowers and stuff like that, and I'm sure a number of companies pop into your head about yeah. online ordering systems that you can order flowers for somebody. But in, around Valentine's Day, they have an enormous amount of load, an enormous amount of requirement. And if you think about what we are trying to sell to them, Nick, do you think the customers understand what their pains are or is a lot of it hidden from a telephony perspective? It's just that's how it's always been done. Do you do a lot of change management in the organization? I think a lot of people don't know what's possible. Okay. So they default to what they do know and they go, uh, you know, it used to work like this, so I want it to work like this. Okay. And, and again, I think that comes down to partly the sales function is that did you tell the guy okay. that he can do more? Okay. Did, did you investigate that with him? Okay. So Euphoria is more about the holistic view of connectivity than just making and receiving phone calls. That's becoming clear. So if we're on an expansion program and moving out, one less worry is the telephony. The telephony is sorted now. Our communications, we can issue business cards and we can get people contacting us via the web, via the, all the channels, including voice, which is a really compelling idea. And what is the euphoria experience? The euphoria experience should be somebody holding your hand all the way. Somebody's got to be giving you some guidance. Somebody's okay. got to be giving you some advice because one of the very old sayings that has been floating around for years and years and years is that the customer's always right. And it's sometimes it's a misnomer because the customer is sometimes misguided or mm -hmm. confused or misinformed. In my view, it's like going to the doctor. I don't really go to the doctor to tell him what, what's wrong with me. Yeah. I go to the doctor to ask him what's wrong with me. Mm. And I think that is what we should be doing with people who are experts in their field is asking them how they can help us, mm -hmm. not telling them this is how I want it because we're doing yeah. ourselves at a service in that. And yeah. whilst the customer is still the customer and the yeah. customer is our reason for being, and we should not forget that as a business or as people, so that we are here to serve that customer, but we are also here to advise them and guide them. The customer is always king, not always right. I'm with that. I'm totally with that. In uh, the last six months, what's, what's given you a bit of a wake-up, shake-up? Well, I can possibly give you two extremes on that one. Yes. The one is that people are still signing themselves into 60-month contracts with banks. I thought we'd got over this, people. I really did. I thought, well, why on earth would you want to do that to yourselves and your business? And I came across that the other day, and I, I mean, I don't, they don't let me out much being that I'm on the technical <laughs> side of things. So, and I did have the privilege of chatting to a customer, and I was just, and they were like, but, you know, I've got this quote, on, and I'm like, what on earth are you thinking? So that was the one thing that did surprise me. The other thing that is very relevant is that telephony is evolving. Telephony services are evolving. And we need to, as a business, evolve with them. 
you know, there's a lot of conversations that people are having around how do you integrate your systems with other systems? How do you add more channels that people can get hold of you? How do you get more value? And all of these conversations are ongoing and they, they spin off in vastly different directions, I might add. Yeah. But more and more people are saying, you know, I want to be able to chase that customer experience. I want okay. my people to be able to answer the phone, hi, Nick, rather than, hi, good morning, can I help you? Yeah, I mean, that's been the holy grail since I was working in call centers. We want that personalized mass touch. Are you talking about doing seamless handovers from one channel to another mid-conversation? Is it getting that extreme? Well, talking about between applications, yes, definitely, you know, getting the integrations right and going, particularly in the call center space of getting things up and going and say, right, I want to be able to greet you by name. I want to, you know, if, if you're phoning into a restaurant and they say to you, uh, good afternoon, Daniel, I see you ordered a Regina pizza last time. Would you like to order that again? Or is it something okay. you I can get you? Okay. You know, then you're going, well, I feel special. You know, these yes. people know yes. who I am and what I like. And that's really the customer experience that you're chasing. That's in the call center space, I think. And please, let's not get too distracted with that because the small business owner may go, but I don't have a call center. Why would I want that? And the, our biggest message over the last 18 months has yeah. got to have been, it's not necessarily call center. It's yeah. productivity. Okay. It's call okay. center for everybody. The yeah. thing that made us be able to go and send our people home and be able to work is my people log in every single day. I know when they're sitting at their desk. Yeah. I know when they're not. I know when they've gone on lunch. I, you know, and without having eyes on somebody, it starts becoming very difficult to understand their productivity and what they're doing with their time. Mm -hmm. If you had to write a management summary one, two, three guide for customers to get this right, what would your first three chapters be about? Understand what your customers want understand what your people are doing and understand where your money is going. Ooh, that would be I like my, that. That would be my opening salvos. And that Ooh. comes back to varying things within telephony systems and things like reporting. Ooh. And so, reporting prompting action. I mean, if your reporting is not talking to you to do something, why are you getting the report? Correct. Okay. So if you have to log, in, log into a system and draw a report to see something, you're probably not going to do it very often. Mm. If mm. it's being sent to you, if it's flagging you and going, hey, pay attention to this, well, then, then it's been more, a little bit more useful. You okay. know, if you're walking into your sales meeting on a Monday morning and not asking people, how many phone calls did you make last week, guys? If you're going, guys, what happened? Yeah. Well, guys, that was yeah. fantastic. You smashed it up the park, you know, mm. and it, Taking it a step further and going not just how many phone calls did you make, but understanding what happened in those okay. phones. Okay. You know, and is Euphoria it's, it's, doing that for customers? Are you seeing the light turn on for customers when you have put the system in place? What happens? What are the three steps when you go in and change systems? Changing the people's mindset. Okay. is probably the biggest step. So the technical implementation, well, that's generally quite easy. Okay. It's, it's cloud-based, you roll it out, you upload, config, you blah, 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 blah. Can, that can be done in a matter of hours. Porting of numbers and stuff like that, well, that's beyond a little bit of our control. That takes time because there's processes in place for that. Yeah. But the, it's the actual getting people into a mindset that says, you know what, you can understand and see and work with the outcomes, not just, hey, we, we as a business received a thousand phone calls yesterday. Okay. But what were they? Yes. What happened? Yes. You as a business owner, you as an executive, if I can say that my business received a thousand phone calls yesterday and 800 of those were successes. Now, what, you know, different businesses have different interpretations of success. You could be a sales company, so there could be a sale. You could be a, oh, you could be a debt collection company that, yeah. that somebody promised to pay. You could be an electrician and somebody called you yeah. on site. Yeah. You took an order. You know, businesses all have some success criteria, but yeah. you as a business owner, you are receiving thousands of emails a day. You're probably receiving hundreds, if not thousands of phone calls a day. Oh. Why? Yeah. What are those yeah. phone calls about? Because if you're not looking at your teams and going, okay, my admin team received 50 phone calls today. What were those 50 phone calls? Oh, 
49 of them were billing queries. Okay, but why? Why was what was wrong with our billing that 49 people are querying our billing? Yeah. Because that's taking time, that's taking resources, that's mm -hmm. that's understanding what your people are doing and what your capacity mm -hmm. planning looks like mm -hmm. in terms of human capital and human mm -hmm. resources and mm -hmm. you know understanding where this needs to go and understanding mm -hmm. the weak points because your customers are telling you the weak points in your business. Mm. What's coming in the next six months that you're most excited about from a technological innovation perspective, if you can talk about it? Oh, that's a tough one. We actually have a bunch of stuff on the horizon right now that is, it's all very exciting. Okay. If I had to pick one thing in particular, yes. I would pick scoring, which sounds like a very random thing for a telephony company okay. to be talking about. But scoring is not... Scoring is something that all people go, oh, there's quality assurance. Yes, so yeah, people are listening to the phone calls and, and seeing whether the, the agents are being compliant and if they're talking nicely to the customer. And, like that. and it, that's why it's not called QA. Okay. It's called scoring. Because scoring is something that can be used, I, I believe, by virtually any company out there and in wow. very many ways. So, so what does it do? It allows you to create scorecards. It allows you to attach media to that. It allows you to then give it to people to complete. So... What are the business use cases for it? Well, you could use that to disseminate information. You want to train your sales team on a new product that you're launching. Well, how do you do it? You make a video, you attach an exam to it, you send it out, you go, okay, guys, let's see how well you, how much you absorbed here. That's use case number one. It's probably the smallest use case. You want to do things like performance management. You want to do your reviews that come up every single year. You want to review people. Well, you can do that with scoring too. Mm. You want to do training of your staff to see how they're doing. We do it internally with our support teams and our admin teams. When they're talking to customers, how should you be talking to customers? No. Is there a way you could have handled that better? You know, that's soft skills coaching. You can do that too. So yes, you know, going on to the compliance as well and going, you know, is this a really a sale? Did you tick all the boxes? Did you ask the guy's ID number? Because mm. particularly when you get into financial services, there's a lot of boxes you need to tick mm. and people need to mm. be very careful of it. But even beyond that, we employ our scoring module within our onboarding teams as well to go and sit with a customer on sign off and go, did we get this right? Did you mm. do this? Did it, did it, mm. it has mm. all these things. How do you feel about it? You know, and that then feeds back into the system and says, how do we improve? Mm. Where do you see euphoria in five years? I am very pleased to say that we are starting our global expansion at this point in time. We are launching in the UK and we have a plan for the next five years to be completely global and touching all the major markets. Wow. And we believe that there's a lot of value that we can not just add to South Africa, we can add to people globally because I think there's a lot of the same challenges and there's a lot of the same mentality out there. It's been really interesting. I'm going to wrap up from my side, Daniel Robus, the host for the Tech Central podcast. I'm going to say thank you, Nick. Have a beautiful summer's day. And uh, yeah, good luck for December. Thank you. Bye-bye.